What's up guys, NYKF31 here, bringing you some NCAA 13 footage, um, both from user games and games against the CPU. And this is going to be just basically a personal list of improvements that I would like to see to the game, see get cleaned up and all that good stuff. Um, I guess with the um, first trailers of NCAA 14 coming out, it's a good time to do this, and I'm not going to spend time talking about glorified commercials. I don't really feel that makes much sense to um, spend time breaking down in-depth um, gameplay trailers, because we really don't know anything much. <laughs> Unless you're a guy who is a community day event person, you don't know anything, me included. So... Any discussion is just speculation and noise for the most part, and I don't do these kind of videos any more than once or twice a year because I feel they tend to get repetitive, redundant, and there's no need to do 8 million videos talking about how the game needs better foot planting. No kidding. We know that. <laughs> so, I tend to avoid... Um, venturing into that realm any more than you know needs to be done to get that point across but anyhow let's go through and talk about the things that i would personally like to see cleaned up improve enhance whatever you want to call it and by far the number one item on my personal wish list is to see the death of man mirror man coverage or route mirror man coverage because what do you predominantly see when you're playing people head to head, you see massive amounts of two man under and crazy aggressive man coverage hyper blitzes. Why do you see that? Because people know that there is a, you know, strong likelihood of being able to shut down a lot of routes due to the defender's abilities to mirror your movements. Sometimes before your receiver makes his cuts. Now in reality, you know, very few teams are three, four, five man deep in quality corners to play man to man coverage a majority of the time across the board. Unless you're just going up against a team that you are just physically better than. Like if you're Texas or somebody like that, for example, going up against um, the Helen Keller School for the Deaf, Blind, and Crippled. You know, it just doesn't happen, especially in this era of the spread. If you come out there and you're rolling with, with man blitzes and man coverage for 90, 95, 100% of the game, you're going to get laced all over the field. You're going to get picked, rubbed, double moved every single down until you get out of it. But this example here is an example of what man coverage should be. Good, honest man coverage. If I can't cover you, I'm beat. This is some form of man zero coverage. He's playing off man. The corners are aligned to um, the nine inside release, which is proper when there's no middle safety help. And they're playing loose. I have a receiver on the right here running a um, deep dig route. He does a good job of selling the streak, driving up field, and the corner has to obviously respect that. And the second he plants and changes direction, the corner is done. Because as you'll see here, he's driving him off, selling like he's going up field. plant. The corner just isn't mimicking his movement. He has to react to what the receiver is doing. In this case, he gets a beat and he gets a beat honestly, which is fine. Either a guy has the ability to match up or the guy doesn't. And even if a guy does, he's not going to win every down. Mm -hmm. So you just want to have a good, honest, clean outcome either way. Zone read defense. I don't think EA understands how zone read defense works. 
The defensive end is only one part of it. There's ten other guys out there too. The end either reads, dive, or keep. That's fine. I have no issue with that. And then sometimes you'll have a one-on-one -on -one with a quarterback versus a linebacker. Sometimes a receiver has to um, crack back and block the linebacker. But a little sense of urgency by the LB would be helpful, or whoever's assigned to get the quarterback. Because when you're defending the read option manually, you never know who on your team is going to try to take the quarterback or take them at all. As soon as he reads that the quarterback has the ball, he needs to do a heck of a lot better job of attempting to um, prevent the quarterback from running down that alley than that. Pulling offensive linemen. This is the good old buck sweep. And this is how we need to see offensive linemen at least attempt to pull and lead block on a more consistent basis. They do a good job there. There are too many times on counters and on trap blocks where you see them um, begin to fire out and then, you know, stop and look around and get in your way, which causes your run to get blown up. And again, I don't want um, every offensive lineman just blasting away, road grading people like a um, Outland Trophy finalist, but I just want to see the effort there and then... And then have his athletic ratings determine, you know, how effective he is in his pulling, acceleration, agility, and all that good stuff. And his blocking ratings then determine how well he's able to hold the um, block at the point of attack. Here's another example of it being done pretty well. This is a designed QB run, a QB wrap, which is the closest thing the game has to a QB counter. Some more designed QB runs would be nice. But here the offensive tackle pulls and he leads through second level. And Mr. Klein is gone. So you can see that it's there. And the fact that it's there and that you do see it, and you do see it, you know, pretty often. You also see the ugliness happen more often than you should. So that tells me at least, that, in my opinion, that it shouldn't be too difficult of a thing to um, clean up for NCAA 14. This, however, is ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. The time for double team interior pass blocking has been overdue for a while. And because you don't have double team interior pass blocking, you get stuff like this, where you have the psychic help offensive lineman to pick up free rushers here. A tight end runs a delay route, and an offensive lineman is able to rob my um, pass rusher there of a sack because he's able to come over and help. And me on the other side, I'm usually my other defensive end. I eventually get by him. Another guy, you know, slides over, pick me up. It's just a complete eyesore. It just looks ugly. And it actually prevents you from getting pressure off the edges with your ends because someone can afford to have weak offensive tackles and not really be punished for it as much as they should because there's an excellent chance that a Offensive lineman will slide on over and pick him up out of the blue. Whereas if you have interior defensive linemen being blocked um, tandemly, someone will have to keep either a back or a tight end in to help out their offensive tackles wide if their um, tackles don't match up with the opposing edge rushers. I actually think the developers for the um, college game, NCAA game, have a harder job than the developers for Madden. And the reason why is because there are such a wide variety of play styles in the college game, and you have so many more teams. The college game has such a you know, deep and diverse flavor, both on offense and on defense, and I think it actually provides the developers of NCAA more challenges than it does 
the developers of Madden to um, get things right. But um, here is a midline option out of the good old Flexbone. If all the elements of the Flexbone spread option were in the game and functioned properly, custom Flexbone spread option would be the only offense that I would run because it has the style of um, option game that I like, plus I can blend the run and shoot passing game that I love in it as well. But there is so much missing from the Flexbone sets that it pretty much forces me to use some shotgun pro set, gator heavy, shotgun heavy, and pistol power sets in order to do that. Tons of stuff is missing from the Flexbone sets, but that's a discussion for another day. But here is a midline option, QB midline option, where I um, hand it off to the dive back, B back, whatever you want to call him. In this case, he's my halfback subbed in um, with the formation packages at the fullback spot in order to get a little bit more pop in there and break away speed. But the whole point of option football is what? It's Well, there's a lot of points to option football, but two of the more basic points is... One, you want to eliminate a defender by optioning off of them. You intentionally leave a guy unblocked and you read his reactions. And also, you want to force a defense to play disciplined assignment football for four quarters. You want them reading and thinking instead of reacting. And you hope that one false step one misread, one instance where you get them thinking and doubting themselves will be that split second that you need to gash them big with something. You really want to force a defense to play disciplined football for 60 minutes, and if you execute, chances are throughout the game you're going to hit a couple of plays here and there that are big because the defense shows a lapse of concentration and discipline. That's you know, bare bones, basic option football in a nutshell. Even though this midline option goes for a big time gain, it is not implemented right in this game at all. In the midline, there's no there's no one to key off of. What you basically have to do is read the flow of the linebackers and go from there as far as deciding whether to give the ball to the fullback or to you know follow the fullback up the hole or run with your eyes with your quarterback in this case I read that the uh, linebackers are um, blitzing both B gaps which leaves the A gap unmanned and boom there's just no one there what there should be is a interior defensive line key where I'm reading off of the defensive tackle if the defensive tackle um, crashes down on the fullback, I keep with the quarterback. If he stays home, I give to the fullback. It should look something like this. This right here is a trap option. Defensive end. He's left unblocked. He crashes down on the fullback. I pull the ball out. Defensive back has the pitch man. The linebacker who's being user controlled gets blocked. He has the quarterback. I have a guard pulling around, and it's gash time. Poor guy's linebacker gets depleted. If this was an Infinity Engine moment, I would probably stumble here, but there isn't, so it at least slows me down, and I get a big gain out of it. And that's how the midline should look, but with the uh, defensive tackle being optioned off of so those are a few of the improvements that I would like to see implemented and how much of those improvements are we will you know find out in the coming months. So I've done enough of yapping for now. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. Would love to hear your thoughts and input and I will talk to y'all later. Peace.